Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. The more I study the scriptures, the more I see the numerous foreshadowings, analogies, and subtle connections that God has embedded throughout the Bible. This is why many have referred to the Bible as containing a scarlet thread of redemption that runs from beginning to end. Unbelievers might argue that these are mere coincidences. Here are just a few examples of these coincidental statements. Isaiah 7, 4 foretells that a virgin would conceive and give birth to a son. This prophecy finds fulfillment in Jesus' miraculous birth through Mary. Is that a coincidence? Micah 5, 2 specifies that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Jesus' birth in Bethlehem fulfills this prophecy. Is that a coincidence? Zechariah 9 predicts that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem triumphantly. Jesus fulfilled this when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey before his crucifixion. Is that a coincidence? Psalm 22, 16 through 18, poetically describes the Messiah's crucifixion, even mentioning the piercing of hands and feet. Jesus' death on the cross fulfills this prophecy. Is that a coincidence? Psalm 16, 10 speaks of the Messiah's resurrection. Jesus' victory over death fulfills this prophecy. Is that a coincidence? Psalm 110 speaks of the Messiah being exalted and seated at God's right hand. Jesus' resurrection and ascension fulfill this prophecy. Is that a coincidence? At the inaugural feast of Passover, God told the Israelites to apply the blood of the sacrificed lamb to their doorposts, the lintel, the horizontal part of the frame, and the side posts, the vertical part of the frame. Because of the covering of blood, the house was spared from God's plagues. Christ shed his blood on the cross, which had both horizontal and vertical parts, to rescue his people. We need to be covered or justified by the blood of the Lamb to be rescued from condemnation. Christ is the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Is that a coincidence? Jesus was crucified at a place called Golgotha, a Hebrew word which means the place of a skull. Jesus is crucified at a place called the skull because he is the head of the church. Is that a coincidence? Jesus appears to his disciples following his resurrection. The scriptures say that the doors were shut where the disciples were, and Jesus came and stood in their midst. John 20, verse 19. Jesus entered the room with closed doors. He doesn't need a door because he is the door. See John 10, verse 9. Is that a coincidence? Are these prophecies and foreshadowings mere coincidences? Absolutely not. Because we know that all scripture is inspired by God, literally God breathed in the original language, we can have confidence that God took great care to embed many, many multidimensional meanings, foreshadowings, and connections to help us see that the Bible is a coherent, connected story of the unfolding of the great redemption of mankind. After all, history is really His story. Another reason for these many embedded foreshadowings is to keep us engaged in the never-ending pursuit of discovering the hidden treasures of biblical wisdom in the pages of the Bible. Proverbs 2 verses 4 through 6 says, If you seek wisdom as silver 
and search for her as for hidden treasures. Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. By using analogies, there are many applications to our lives that we can draw from these treasures of wisdom found in the Bible. Here's an example. Jesus showed the disciples, including doubting Thomas, the scars on his hands and his side. See John 20, verse 27. Note that Jesus' scars remained even in his resurrected body. You might say that he was scarred for life. His scars were how the disciples recognized him and confirmed his identity. In a similar manner, people will often recognize us by our scars of life. Jesus will often heal or deliver us from painful situations, but often there will be resulting scars. We might want to try to hide these scars from the view of others or ask God to remove the scars. But in reality, our scars give us credibility with others and allow them to connect better with us because they have their own scars of life. We therefore seem more approachable to them. So just as Jesus was scarred for life, so are we. These treasure Treasures of wisdom within the Bible are inexhaustible. They are often hidden and subtle, but never coincidental. Will you join me today in digging deep into the scriptures, searching for the hidden treasures of wisdom? Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is the Bible Study software package entitled eSword. This free Bible study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers, and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-window display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for esword. That's e-sword.